on this divider, I'm going to make a long tuck spot that extends from the top down to the bottom at an angle. So I'm going to use these two papers. This will be the paper to mat, and this will be the paper that forms the tuck spot. So I'm going to set this aside, and I start by measuring how wide I want my, my pocket to be. And I want to go from the holes to about one eighth of an inch from the edge. So that would be about here. And then height wise, I'm going to want it to go from about an eighth of an inch from the bottom and maybe about up to here. Now I need to add half an inch for the flap that will fold under at the bottom and along the left pocket. So I position my paper in the trimmer and I'm going to trim half an inch away from the first mark I made. And then likewise I'm going to trim half an inch away from this mark. And now I can score my lines. So half an inch from the left and half an inch from the right. And then I just trim the corners bit here. my flaps under. And that's going to go over like that. Now I want to cut this at a bit of an angle. so it doesn't show. Ugh, the battery in my camera died just before I was finished making this uh, this page. So I'll just describe the rest of the steps. So I attached the pocket and then to mat, I just take a piece of paper and I position it over top the divider and I can mark where I want to trim it about one eighth of an inch from the top and one eighth of an inch from the holes. And then I can tuck it inside I just need to glue these edges because these are held down by the pocket anyways and also by not gluing these edges it makes it easier to slide in. Now another little tip is if you're having a hard time getting it right in the corner what you can do is just trim off the corner piece and then you can slide it and have it nice and snug there and there because sometimes you might have a little bit of glue um, where the corners meet and uh, that interferes with um, with sliding the, um, the matting right down in that corner. 
And there's the finished product. And of course I inked around the edges. And I also inked around the edges of my pocket afterwards. I'd forgotten to do that before attaching it. I replicated the pockets, envelopes, paper bags on my other pages as well. So I'll just quickly show you the backs of the dividers. And this is the one I just finished making. I want to put some little ribbon, uh, little ribbon tabs on here, and I'm going to attach some charms. Now, before I do that, I notice that the design on the cover wraps around this edge, and I'm going to use a bit of gesso just to cover up that edge. I was thinking of wrapping some paper over, but I think I'll just use a little bit of gesso. I really like the picture on the back, so I'm going to leave that as is. And here I might just put something um, like a tag for a title on the side. So I'm going to grab my brush and I've already started putting a little bit of gesso on there. And instead of taking all my pages out, I'm just going to slide a piece of paper here. Turn on my light and I'm going to apply this just along the edge. I'll do the whole edge just so that it's consistent. And most of the cover will be covered up with paper anyways. And not only that, but it does actually clean it up because this is a very old book. So I think I'll probably end up doing the same thing around the back cover as well. And then I can do in here. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'll put another coat or two on there and that will cover the design. And like I said, I'm going to put a little bit around the edges here because it does clean it up quite a bit. Oops. Luckily it's going to be covered. going to have to clean up my surface after this. Yeah, this is much better. So I'm going to do the same thing on the back and maybe I'll put another one or two coats on there. So I've warmed up my glue gun and I'm going to attach these little ribbon tabs. I've got eight little ribbons, two of each color, and I'm going to stagger them throughout the book. Now I've already got um, a tab here that I can write on so I'm not going to put my little ribbon tab there I'm going to put it on another page and I've decided to use the image pages to attach my tags my uh, my tabs and then I'm just going to dangle some little charm and beads on them I've got lots of charms I've got vintage beads and I've got these little light bulb like pins that I'm going to use to attach them so I'm going to start by gluing my ribbons. 
So I fold this in two. Now when you're cutting them, you want to measure so that they will stick out enough over your pages. And But at the same time, you don't want them to go beyond the cover. This is quite a wide cover, so I've got lots of leeway here. So I'm going to have my tab extend out oh, almost three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to start by attaching this one at the bottom since I've already got something at the top and I'm just going to work my way up on the pages. So I start by attaching the back. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there. I better get a new glue stick ready. to attach the front. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of glue to hold this down, but this will flatten out over time. And also, I've got my little pin that I'm going to be putting there. And I'll just use this little butterfly as an example. And I just attach that on here. You can either have it dangle or dangle over the top or just hanging down like that. I think I'll have this one dangling around like that. So that's the first one and I'm going to continue attaching these. My next one is this one. So I'm going to, I think I'm just going to put my next tab here. I really like this this ribbon. I'm just kind of eyeballing that. So this is a good way to use up those little bits of ribbon in your stash. And I mix them up. I like mixing the colors and the textures.
So I'm going to repeat the pattern on the in the last four sections. So this is what my tabs look like and I've attached some little charms and a bead on each one. I like adding this jewelry to my journals. So I think next I'm going to finish working on my cover. So I've decided to use this image for my front cover and it follows the same theme as these other images. It's from the same book and I want to center that on here but I'm going to put a sheet of this paper as the background like that and then I found this lace I think this is from um, a very thin tablecloth so I think that would look kind of nice hanging over like that with just a little bit of the the edge sticking beyond the binder so I'm going to stitch this together. Now I'm going to start by measuring out my background. And I want to make sure that I cover here. I could have just sewed that a bit to make sure it was covered, but I'll just, um, I'm probably going to have a little border here anyways that will cover. So I'm just going to go ahead and measure where I need to cut. I'm going to leave a very small gap all around of about one eighth of an inch. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to stitch my lace. Make sure I've got the right side up here. And I'm going to set out my, my scallops so that they match. Let's see, I can go like that. No, I want them. It starts like that. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to want them to just stick over the edge a little bit. Yeah, something like that. So before I cut, I'm going to go and stitch around my um, my paper and it's going to be a lot easier than trying to get it cut perfectly the first time and then stitching. So here's my stitched lace. I'm just going to flip this over and now I can cut around the edges of the paper. I'm going to keep these little bits of lace because I could use them to make pockets also inside the journal if I wanted to. That's going to go like that, but I want to map my image. So I'm going to cut a piece of this brown cardstock and I'm going to stitch the cardstock to my fabric. I'm not going to stitch the image because all of those layers are probably going to be a little bit hard on my needle.
again I'm just eyeballing. That's pretty good. I'm going to ink around the edges and then I'm going to zigzag stitch that this piece to my fabric. So that's going to go like that and I can put a little dab of glue to hold it in place while I'm stitching. That might help. I'll let this dry a little bit and I'm going to zigzag stitch around the edges. I inked around the edges of my image and I'm going to glue that right in the center. Okay, let's get this on there. Yeah, I really like how that looks. I think I'm going to end up inking the edges of my binder. Give it an old look. Yeah, I like that. This is a very thick um, chipboard that they used for the cover, so I don't think I'm going to be punching any holes for eyelets. I'll probably just use some sort of elastic system that just wraps around to keep it closed. And now I'm going to attach my paper and I'm going to warm up my hot glue gun because I think I'm just going to attach this little trim on the edge. I like how that finishes it off.
going to put a good layer of glue all around the edges and a little bit in the middle just to hold everything in place. So that lines up with the edge and then I just center top to bottom although it's pretty much the same the same size. There we go. There's a bit of the border showing at the top and bottom and I've got it lined up on this edge so that my my little trim sticks out and I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to prepare my trim and this is a type of trim that um, that unravels when you cut it so I'll show you a little tip for for working with this what I like to do is I use my hot glue gun and I just glue a section of it, make sure it lays flat and I'm going to let that cool down and harden and because it's holding all of the threads in place I'll be able to cut through it and it's not going to unravel. Okay, so this is hardened, so now I can cut right through it and I'm going to do the same thing at the other end. So I'm going to place this on my journal so that it lines up with the top of my fabric and it's going to go down the whole length about here. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add some glue to this section. And let that harden. Well, that's hardening. I think. Let's see what happens if I use my ink on the edge of the fabric a bit. Yeah, it kind of blends it in. So I'm just going to do that along the top and the bottom. Good. So I'm going to cut this about here. And now I can glue it on. I really love this trim. I can still open it.
so there's my front cover. I like how that turned out and I might put some more embellishments on here. I'm not sure. I could put a little bow or something. I just came up with an idea for the back cover. Now because I'm leaving this flower pattern there it will blend in with the side even though I cover that up but I want something to tie it in with the front and I still have a long piece of lace and I'm thinking maybe what I can do is take a, st a strip of this paper not too wide and I can cut a piece and attach this piece of lace to it and just have it overhanging the side of the album and then I'll still have my flower image visible so it might only be like about I don't know up to maybe an, an inch wide or so so I'm going to stitch my lace to my paper and then we'll see what it looks like so there's my little strip and I'm going to glue that like that and then I think I'm going to take this trim which I used on the cover and attach it like that. My camera card was full so my camera stopped running but here's my piece of lace attached and I inked the top and bottom edges of the lace so now I'm going to attach my piece of trim And that's it for my back cover. And I think I'll re-ink around the edges again on the back. I didn't do a very good job. So next I'm going to work on the side. For the spine I was going to cover this section and leave the flowers there but then I thought if this is going to be used as a home record journal I thought it'd be kind of cool to have Better Homes and Garden appear as a title. So I've decided to just cover this section and can also write another little title on here or, or dates and I just stamped a little red heart. I inked around the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach that. I'm just gonna use my glue.
and I'm going to center it left to right. It's not always easy when you're working on a rounded spine. And I'm going to let that dry. Yeah, I like the way that looks. For the inside, front and back cover, I've got this beautiful paper and I think I'm going to use that to mat the base of the covers. So I'm going to trim this to size, ink around the edges, and just glue this down. And then I've got some of this lace left over, so I might make a little corner pocket of some sort with this. Yeah, I love this paper, and I like how it looks in the journal. So I'm going to plan my pocket. I have this piece of fabric left, this piece of lace, and I think I'll make a pocket that's attached to the left and bottom, and then this will stay over to tuck things on the right, and then I'm going to leave this little scalloped edge. So I just need to decide how wide I want my pocket, or how high. I think it's going to go like that. And I'm going to trim my cardstock I'm going to stitch the lace to the cardstock. Here's my finished pocket. And because this is going in my Etsy shop, I don't think I'm going to add any other embellishments in there because whoever gets it can decide what stamping they want to do. And uh, if they have a special theme, they can include their own tags and whatnot. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. It's embellished enough with the little jewelry on the side, I think for now. Um, I will include some of these strips so that whoever gets this can either glue on additional pages or stitch them on the way I showed in the video. So I'll leave those in there. There's quite a few of them so there's an opportunity to add some more pages. I hope you found this tutorial useful. And check out your thrift shop because that's where I found this old Better Homes and Gardens book. And I think I've seen quite a few of them in the past. So have a look and uh, I love working with binders. And by using this method, even though you don't have the punches or their odd shaped albums, you can still use them to make your journals. So have a nice day and happy crafting. Bye!